Okay, I'm gonna try to mimic what uh, Bonnet Mom did. Show off my backyard, everybody. <laughs> she really does have a beautiful garden. It's like, it's, it's, it's insanely, I mean, I, I mean, you can tell she spends a ton of time out there. It's crazy. Anyway, um, I, I'd like to introduce you to a couple of friends of mine. This is uh, Sigma right here. That's what my children call him, Sigma the alligator. And then, you know, we've got your typical whatever flo other kind of flotation devices. I, I really wanted to in introduce you to Sigma, though. He's He's been he's been fun to have this summer. And surprisingly, he hasn't popped yet. I mean, I bought this thing probably back in May. May or June. And he's stood the test of time. The little bastard kids of mine run and jump off the edge of the pool and land on him. I tell them not to do that, and they do it anyway. I'm like, you're going to bust it. But, you know, he's he's stood the test of time. Anyway, that's not what I'm making this video for. Um, yeah, Bonnet Mom had a really good video um, just talking about... Uh, I, I almost want to break it down and, and, and create, like, a dichotomy and be like um, altruism versus hedonism. Um, you know, hedonism being what we were referring to as the baby boomer generation. I'm not saying that they were complete hedonists because they they weren't, but they were highly influenced by hedonism. Let's just put it that way. For those of you who don't know what hedonism is, it's basically, I mean, to sum it up in a nutshell, if it feels good, do it. So it could feel good to be nice to somebody. So as long as that feels good, then do that. But if it feels good to do drugs, if it feels good to kick someone's ass, if it feels good to just uh, screw your neighbor's wife or whatever else, then do that too. Um, and then you have altruism, uh, which a lot of people argue uh, is one of the main things that sets human beings uh, apart from animals. Um, you don't typically find animals that um, perform altruistic acts. Now, you will find the occasional dog that drags his, his, his owner out of a burning house, you know, and the guy's unconscious and the dog drags him. Like, whatever these crazy stories are, first, they're incredibly rare. I mean, they happen, what, once every 50 years or something? Um, I don't know how often they happen, but they don't happen a lot. Um, you got that, and then also you usually the dog is going to do that for his owner, for the person who feeds him every day, for the person who plays with him and takes him for walks every day. He's not going to do it for a stranger, and that's what altruism uh, essentially is. It's uh, doing something nice for someone that you really shouldn't give a shit about, and it's um, it's interesting because it has uh, it has baffled scientists since the beginning of time. Uh, all of the biological evolutionists who say um, that every single behavior of ours is based on um, uh, like preserving our own gene pool and forwarding our own genes and and uh, survival and all that stuff. Yet altruism uh, is something where there's, say, like a person in a different tribe, a person um, who is basically one of your competitors you uh you do something nice for him you 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 save him from the lion that's trying to eat him or whatever you know um he's he's uh dying on the side of the road and you you help him up and give him a drink and give him something to eat and you know like the good samaritan thing uh why would why would anybody do that and I remember being in psychology, one of my psychology classes, where um, the, the the professor was saying that exact thing. She's like, I don't understand altruism. I, I don't get it. It doesn't. And, and the reason why it didn't, she didn't understand it is because it didn't fall in line with any of the scientific um, theories that she believed in or read in. So it's, it's, it gives them what you call cognitive dissonance. Um, why on earth would you? Uh, want to, you know, if there was a uh, an old man from a competing tribe who was laying in the middle of the road uh, and he was basically your, your sworn enemy because, you know, th there's only so many, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, resources in this world and 
the fewer people there are chasing after the resources, then the more I get, right? Isn't that kind of what it boils down to with um, uh, biological evolution? And it's 100% against that to want to help somebody. Um, you know, there's even stories, um, very, very, very interesting stories that I've never, never heard of before, where in Vietnam, um, and this is early on in Vietnam before America really pissed them off, um, uh, maybe like whatever, 65, 66, um, there would be stories about uh, like an ambush unit uh, going in the jungle and just waiting to ambush some, some, some Vietnamese. Uh, they come across Vietnamese, they have a shootout. Um, some of the Vietnamese even die. Um, but the, the, the Viet Cong who like, they end up winning, right? They end up beating them all. They end up wiping them all out, but not all of them are dead. Some of them are laying there with a sucking chest wound because they got a bullet through their lung or something like that. Um, some of them, you know, maybe their legs are mangled or they're whatever, but they're still alive, right? And so what these Vietnamese did are our sworn enemies. They buried the dead, took all their weapons off them, of course, but they buried the dead and they patched up the wounded. Can you believe that i can't i mean i do believe it happened i'm just baffled extremely baffled why um you know somebody comes into your country to kill you because they hate your way of life and they're there to kill you you're just defending yourself basically as a vietnamese um and you're gonna you're going to patch them up after you shoot hole, a bunch of holes in them? So what, what, what motivates that? What motivate that, that, that kind of thing? What, what, what could possibly motivate it? Um, and you can't say, you know, just like love or compassion or whatever, because um, there's so many instances where people don't do that. There, I, I would say there's the majority of instances are situations where people don't do that. I mean, if you watch, you know, and I know the movies aren't always realistic about everything, but if you watch, you know, movies like Platoon or any other Vietnamese or a, a, a Vietnam War movie, you know, when they go into an area and they kill a bunch of Vietnamese and then the other ones are wounded, they don't take them away. They finish them off. Like, I'm not going to carry this, you know. I just had a fire fight with these guys. You know, he, they just killed my best friend. You think I'm going to walk up and patch him up no i'm just gonna finish him off man put the put the barrel in his mouth pull the trigger get it over with um because america was on seek and destroy missions that's what they were we went out looking for trouble in vietnam in vietnam and we found it um anyway sorry i'm digressing off what i'm saying is what on earth would motivate somebody to be nice to your enemy like that uh, or to at least treat your enemy with respect. You know, when we see the soldiers in America getting caught, you know, pissing on corpses of uh, uh, dead Iraqis or whatever, and there have been photos of that kind of stuff. Um, now, not to say that that's, that describes every American, but, it, you know, people will believe that it does when they read it. But um, there isn't a lot of altruism in the world. Um, which is really why, you know, if you see somebody who's really in need, like in the middle of a downtown area in a big city, most people are just going to walk right past the dude. I, I mean, even if it's obvious what happened to him, you know, he got the shit kicked out of him, he's got blood coming out of his mouth, he's laying there. You know, it's not like some bum just faking it to, to get a couple bucks. It really is like a, a guy who needs somebody's help. You know, it's a hardworking guy wearing a suit. He got his ass kicked and he's laying in the middle of the road with blood all over him. Most people are going to walk right past the guy. Most people do, right? But there's a certain percentage of people who stop and help. And all it takes is one out of 50 people. 
I mean, if there's, you know, it just takes one guy. And then usually what happens is that when the one guy does it, then a bunch of other people get um, inspired to do it. And then they all run in there and help them out. And, um, but it always takes one brave soul. It always takes one, one guy who is not willing to walk past that situation and let it, um, let it unfold without him uh, trying to help the situation. Um, so yeah, um, hedonism is good for you, um, altruism is good for the world. What's, uh, what defines altruism though, in my opinion? Like, um, it's not just doing good, it's not just doing good for other people that, that you don't necessarily know or would, would normally not care about, but it's also unforced. I think that's very important, right? If you have forced altruism, then what do you have? You have socialism or communism, whatever, which basically means you're gonna take care of this person who's in need, whether you like it or not. And we could decide who's in need and who's not around here. You know, if they pass our tests, then, they're, then they get to be on the rank and file and the, and the uh, uh, welfare recipient. And if you don't pass our test, then you gotta go to work. But it's our test, it's not your test. <clears throat> forced altruism is socialism forced hedonism what the hell is that i don't think there is such a thing as forced hedonism because hedonism is all about you just doing whatever the hell you want to do nobody forces you to do that because if they did then you wouldn't be doing what you wanted to do ah! um Yeah, I think we're all, to a degree, we're all hedonistic to a, to a degree, and we're all altruistic to a degree. We, we've all done both things, right? We've all done things that um, hurt others but felt really good at the time for us, and we knew that it was going to hurt others. You know, we, we knew exactly what we were doing, but we did it anyway. And then there have been times, you know, where we, uh, for whatever reason, we felt inspired to, you know, help that, help that old lady cross the street or the old man who fell down doesn't know where the hell he is. Um, most of us are in the middle between those things. But uh, I would say, I would say, if we all voluntarily became much more altruistic, much more willing to help people in need, this world would be an incredibly better place, right? Um, because if you if if you think about it, what's what's one of the biggest reasons that you don't that you don't help somebody? I mean, I if I'm being completely honest, I would say the biggest reason why I wouldn't help somebody is because I'd be like, well, well, they wouldn't help me if I was in this situation. It's really like this um, lack of trust in society. Or, you know, um, you know, you don't have any faith in humanity. So because it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if you don't have faith in humanity, if nobody has faith in humanity, then humanity is not worth ha having faith in, right? But it's one of those things that it only exists because you, because you think it does, right? It only exists because you think it does. And the more people who are altruistic, whoa, what are these bugs flying around right now? Getting like little bugs flying around. Anyway, um, imagine if, if most people were more than willing to help their neighbor, most people, you know, so in other words, I'm not just talking about people who are in desperate need. I'm talking about anything, right? Like if I'm messing around in my backyard and I'm trying to, who knows, cut, cut something down from those trees over there, but my ladder's too short. And my neighbor over here is like, hey, I see you're having some problems here, here dude. I got a ladder that's, uh, you know, whatever, 10 feet taller. But we don't, we're not, we're not naturally, um, wired to do that we're more naturally wired to be like it's his fucking you know let him go get a ladder 
He makes money. He's got. He's, he, he, oh, he can have his own ladder. He can afford his own ladder. Let him get it. You know, and it's not. Like, I mean, it's like both of those answers are correct to a degree, but you know. But again, if most people were more than willing to help you, then you in turn would probably be more more willing to help people because what goes around comes around would be like a real thing, right? It would be a real thing. You know, you would always be like, well, you know, I mean, if I help this guy out, then I'm sure he's going to help me out. You say good karma or whatever it is. Call it, call it, call it whatever you want to call it. But if more people had faith in humanity, then humanity would be worth having faith in. And uh, I think the thing that uh, pushes us in that direction is altruism basically going against your biological nature and actually giving a shit about people that you normally wouldn't give a shit about. All right. Have a good night, y'all.